Are your new managers off to a great start and then you roll? Hi, my name is Greg Story. I'm the president of Daioko U Training here in Japan. Now often we promote people based on their functional expertise or their experience and we get them out of a player role into a manager role, leader role. And often we set them up for failure because we don't give them any training on how to make that transition from doing to leading other people. All the things that made us great on the way up work for us. We've eliminated all the things that don't work for us and we've found out our core strengths and we've worked on those and then through dint of hard work we've been recognised and we've given the next position up which is a leadership or management position. However, when we get into that position we discover, uh oh, the people I'm leading, the people I'm managing here, hey, they're not like me. They're not they're not thinking the same. Their expectations are not the same. They're not motivated the same way. Oh, and I've got to communicate with them. Before I had to communicate with myself, but now I've actually got to communicate with other people. And oh my God, this is so hard. And this is where a lot of new managers fail because they don't get the right training. So why don't we think about helping people to make that transition from being a player and doing and going into being a leader. So what do you need when you become a leader? Well. What is the difference between being a player and a leader? Well, we've got to be very clear about that. It's a completely different role. We're being asked to do different things now. So we've got to be very clear about what is the actual job that the company expects us to be doing. So we've got to clarify that. And also now we've got to actually coach people. We may have been excellent in ourselves. We knew how to do things. But what about the people who are working for us? What if they're not excellent? What if they need to be schooled up and they need to be developed and they need to be led and they need to be coached? How do we coach people? You didn't have to coach anybody before. You had responsibility for yourself. You just got on and, and you did it. Now you've got to coach other people. How do we coach other people? How do we get them motivated? How do we get them developed? And then we discover, well, communication. We've got to communicate with people. We've got to speak them in a way that really resonates with their motivations and their desires and their interests to make them really engaged and want to go forward. And so we've got to be better at explaining things. We've got to be clear. We've got to be concise. We've got to be very crisp in our explanation because time is short. We've got to make sure the message is getting through to people in a way that really resonates with them. And then, of course, performance management, right? We've got goals. The, the team, the unit has goals got to be achieved. We're now responsible for those goals. So we've got to manage the performance of the people working for us. Now, when it was just ourselves, we had a target, we could apply our energy and our effort and we could get it and that was easy. Now we have to get leverage through other people and their strengths. Not the same thing. How do we do that? And then people, people, managing people, they're so different and their thinking is different. And how do we, how do we work with our people skills? People skills probably wasn't such a vital thing before because we had so much control because we only worry about ourselves. Now we're doing a group of other diverse people. Our people skills, our human relations skills have really got to be on point because if they're not, then people won't follow us. They'll, they'll become disengaged. Uh, some of them may be jealous that we got promoted. Uh, some may think, oh, why, why, what do you know? You just got the job. You don't know anything about leadership. Why should I follow you? If we can build good human relations with people, then they'll have the desire to follow us. What we want is not leadership of, hey, I'm the boss, I'm now the head of this unit, you'll do what I say, got it? That's not the leadership we're talking about here. We're talking about the leadership of the followers willingly, willingly want to come with us on the journey. We've identified where we're going, we've talked about how we're going to get there, we've really got them motivated to join us, they want to come on the journey because it's going to be willing cooperation. This is what we mean by leadership. So, how do we do that? Well, we've got a great program, one day program for new leaders, how to become a professional leader. And this addresses all of those things I've talked about, gives the new leader training exactly what they need to be successful. What we don't want is we put them into a new role that puts them at risk, they fail and then they get fired. And we've wasted everyone's time and there's a great career that didn't really get off the blocks from the very start. So let's make sure we set people up for success give them the right training, cover all these key areas they need, one day set them up and then this will make sure the whole team's moving well and the whole team's set up for success. <laughs>